All right, and welcome to episode 10 of the Gunnam Explain podcast. I'm your host, Adam Blue. So cool that uh, I've got 10 in the bag. How about that? I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, be sure to subscribe if you haven't uh, here on YouTube. Doing a giveaway, two items to give away. It's that Barbados Lupus Rex high grade, as well as the uh, GPO1 FB G frame. Um, those are a lot of different words and various configurations that I'm able to say uh, at will at times, and I'm pretty proud of that. Gundam has helped that uh, quite a bit. Um, yeah, so audio uh, version is available almost everywhere. I saw there's this Anchor thing. I know about Anchor where you can like make your own podcasts. Um, but I don't know if that's also where you can put them on. I'll look into that. Let me know if someone uses that or something. I'm not too sure. But, I mean, Spotify, RSS feed. Hey, if there's any other way you want to listen to it, um, yeah, let me know. Uh, or maybe view it. What if YouTube isn't the best place for or the only place for a video podcast? I never really thought about that. Um also join the Discord. There's a link in all the video descriptions um, for the Discord channel. A, a lot of people in there are talking about stuff. Um, uh, and uh, I try to uh, spend some time in there to look at what people are talking about. There's fan fiction in there. There's model kits that have been built. Sometimes some cool questions that then I will go and look up. And I really want to set it up to where there is the Q&A portion, even though I like to go through these comments, I want it to eventually be a specific area for comments to be, or questions to be featured uh, on the podcast. So it'll be like, it's like mailbag or whatever that was called back in the day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, real quick, latest videos since the last podcast, that was episode nine, um, the Andrew WK, which by the way, his official Instagram, which is really probably run by someone else entirely, liked my post on Instagram of the thumbnail. So that's kind of cool, like cool adjacent, I guess, because I don't really think it was him, but still. Um, <laughs> uh, then I had the video go up for the Ka Signature Zeta Gundam uh, Robot Spirits metal version. Uh, there's so many different ways I could call this, I like even in the title, I put metal Robot Spirits review, but... Anyway, pretty interesting thing. It, it's really awesome, worth the price, but was it everything I wanted in a Zeta? I don't, I'm not sure yet. That still needs to happen. Um, also, speaking of Zeta, I did a Zeta Gundam Episode 1 review because I love Zeta. It, it's it's one of my favorites. I did you know the Episode 1 for Mobile Suit Gundam, and that's at 111 views, and then the Zeta's at 89. Um... And I'm going to try to factor in, you know, there's a week's difference, but I wonder from that what was more popular, or if I should just do a double Zeta episode one video next. Ah, oh, there's so many things I want to talk about. I've been meaning to do Char's counterattack. I even been planning it and doing notes, and that's what I've realized for this content that I come out on YouTube. If I really want it to be good, I really have to take more time in my videos. I try to do this format. Just so I, I, there's less editing, but really, in order to, non-podcast videos, I, I really have to, I guess there's a trade-off. I can take time at the front to take notes, like script out everything, so there's less editing. Or I can just go on the fly and then edit after. Both take time just trying to figure it out, but I have fun doing it. I, the most fun I've had doing videos have actually been lately, other than this podcast, because I actually really like this format. But that Gundam Rising review, the Zeta Gundam episode one review, I loved going back with more Gundam knowledge and just talking about what I'm seeing. But the video that I just sprung up surprisingly, because I had been working on it for a while, it's this every mobile suit at the attack on Torrington base seen in Unicorn Gundam, um, I, I actually made the video a little while ago, but it just, uh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted, and I realized it really requires me to do a little more research, and so yeah, the video that's up right now I think is awesome, that's part of my lore series, I really want to have more lore stuff in, so if anyone has any suggestions for lore, let me know, it's kind of UC-centric, for now and maybe for a while, but yeah, let me know. Um, 
Let's see. What are some other things? Um, yeah, so this past week, I actually got more things than I thought Gundam related. Um, first of all, and this is the cool one, I finally landed the uh, Robot Spirit Sazabi. Um, and it is, I don't know how to explain it. It's cooler than I thought. You know, it's not as cool looking as, um, I'm um, seeing some interesting light. It's like the light can shine through. Um, I don't know. Hmm. I might have to investigate that further. That's interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like when you see like the real grade Sazabi, you know, or, or I'm playing, you know, GPO2. GP, yeah, no, Gundam GBO2. Oh, man. <laughs> um, Gundam Battle Operation 2 on PlayStation, they have the Sazabi, and you kind of get used to the more, where these things are slightly modernized as opposed to the anime look. And really with the Sazabi, they really stuck to the anime look, where it, it's a little, I don't know what to say, it's a little simplistic. Even though the designs for the modern interpretations are the same, there's more of a modernness shoved in and I don't know how to explain it. Um but this is I'll probably do a video on this uh because it is pretty cool. The the neck is a little weird how it like super opens up and he's got that gap. Um the waist is although waist swivel is always fantastic, but it's like super gappy. Uh that could be done on purpose. The engineering in these robot spirits are awesome anyway. Um okay some other things I got. Now I didn't this is a core fighter I've already had, but I found something on Mandrake that was, or Mandorake. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it actually, but um, it was like this, they're, you know, typical stands, but with lasers on them. I love it. Um, I, there's so many things that I could do with this. And once I had this idea of the core fighter with like lasers coming out, I just, I, I thought this was just excellent. And I have this little, if you go to the Instagram, I have a, um, uh, uh, one of my shelves that's more of the original Mobile Suit Gundam Robot Spirits of her anime, and I have like the hangar deck kind of situated. I uh, have the G Fighter, um, G Falcon, G Fighter, um, the core booster, and then, uh, or the core fighter. And then something I got here, and it's kind of a sad story I'm going to get into in a second, but here is the ball. Um, really cool. In fact, um, and then I was watching, um, I haven't been watching too much Gundam this past week, actually. Uh, I've just been catching up on MS Igloo that I got last week. And they have a episode where they feature a lot of ball um, action. Ball action. Okay. Um, and it, you know, it was really cool seeing how the Federation was using them. Um, and then the Principality of Xeon had their... Um, what were they called? Pods. It was kind of like the answer to the ball. Um, pretty sad episode. But what's really sad is, so, uh, I love effect parts, right? And I have these two blue effect parts down here that came with the gun cannon. Anyway, so I had this on my shelf. I'm like, cool, I got this cool thing. It's shooting. And then I was going to take it off the stand. It's Different than they typically work. It's like a piece that plugs in and then you plug in this. Anyway, I dropped it. And the blue uh, effect parts broke off to where the pegs were stuck in. That, it hurts me. It hurts me. Especially because, you know, these things don't come too cheap. I like to take care of my things. I guess I shouldn't be uh, fiddling with uh, stands while I'm standing up because I was standing at my shelf instead of like at my table. And I was able to take one broken peg out, but I couldn't take it out of the other. There's options I could do. Um, I was thinking I could reinforce and fix the effect part. I shouldn't make it too big of a deal. It just bothers me because that's, uh, that's me not being careful. It's me being irresponsible. These... Nah. And I need to be able to take care of my stuff. I have to teach this to my kids. So I need to be able to do it. Um, anyway, but you know what? Between the gun cannon and the ball, if I ever see those suckers cheap, I'm going to be buying more anyway because I like the idea of having a whole bunch of them around. Um, yeah, I mean, I have that hanger 
deck set up that I really like, and it would just be really awesome to like finish it out. There's a there's one that comes with a gun tank, and I don't have that. That's just super expensive, and I really need to find the right time with like some gift cards or whatever to jump on that. But to have like tons of GMs, gun cannons, Zaku's, and then just kind of recreate some cool battle scenes. That's what I do with my life. But, um, you know, I'm trying to think if there's anything other than that I got that was Gundam related. But, yeah, that's really about it. So, anyway, yeah, anyone that's been following, leave a comment if uh, you got anything this past week that's Gundam related. Because, yeah, I like to... I like to see what people get, and that's that's what's cool, too, is there is someone uh, on the Discord that gets Robot Spirits also, so I don't feel alone. Um, very, very cool. All right, so you know what? I think that is it for kind of that random update stuff. But there's some news I wanted to talk about. It's not too much, really. So this, which you cannot see because it's way bigger than I thought, um... This is that Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, that is a new Gundam show coming out. This was actually announced before the last podcast. I just didn't bring it up. So, a couple things from this. One, I kind of, kind of don't care if it's not UC. I know that sounds bad. I think, though, for sure... I will be watching it for this channel immediately and talk about it on the podcast. Even though it's not going to be primary, I- I'm going to I'm going to do it because it's just it's current. Keep an update with Gundam. I got to say, The Witch from Mercury, awesome name. Also, in the UC timeline, there is mention of Jupiter and Mars. So we can see that humanity has gone that far in terms of, you know, maybe just having space stations right outside or ships. But what about Mercury? And so maybe that's what it could be referring to. But really, it could just be a um, another uh, alternate universe uh, Gundam series because they already have that uh, Cruise Cruise Dawn's Island. Is that his name? Um, or is that that Brazilian food, my... Couscous. I'm thinking this is Brazilian food my wife gets. Anyway, um, I I'm just curious. Really, and I don't know. Even looking at the title, I mean, even Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway didn't look like a normal Gundam title. And usually, Mobile Suit Gundam would be with something that's Universal Century. Although, I want to say, was it? IBO or another recent one that used Mobile Suit Gundam anyway in its full title instead of just Gundam is what I mean. Sometimes you just see it's like called Gundam this, Gundam that. Um, and usually if it's UC centric, it says Mobile Suit Gundam. We'll see. We will see. Very interested in, in what that's all about. Now let's move on to some pressing matters. Okay, so look, I know a lot of people really prefer Gumpla, but. I kind of got over that, and I love the Robot Spirits. Obviously, most of my videos are on that. But they've just announced these that are going uh, up for pre-order, and they will be going up for pre-order. I'm recording this on this day. Uh, obviously, you're listening and watching this on another. But the mid midnight following the recording, the conclusion of this recording, they will be up for pre-order. I want them both, and they are... That is quite the price to just j- dump just all of a sudden when I wasn't even planning. I mean, I was even looking to get this uh, Ghost Gundam, and I was like, well, we'll see. 110, I don't have much attachment to Crossbone as much or even know about the Ghost that much. That would be if, you know, I'm in a good spot. Oh, like I could have got the No. Oh, and then, but yeah, but that's, anyway. Back to the point, but these, I want to say, when I first got into Gundam, uh, you know, the Mark II I fell in love with, but I would see Master Grades, and I had the high grade of this, the TR1 Hazel, yeah, and it is amazing. Look at this. Look at this thing. Um, Like, just, when I, I think paint separation, but, or color separation, but that's not even a thing with 
the uh, action figures because they're made that way. You don't have to paint. There's not missing paint. It comes with all these parts, option parts. Like, this would be the ultimate. And not only, um, not only is this a robot spirits, but it's a metal robot spirits. Meaning, like, the joints and main parts of it will be metal. And I think this is just going to be incredible. I have to get it. I have to get it. And so where I'm located, I think that's going to be like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. I'm really curious if Robot Spirit stuff sells out right away. I mean, we saw the, uh, oh, that was the page before. The, um, this Ghost Gundam is still up for pre-order, but I don't know how wanted this is compared to the Hazel Custom. You know, this is from uh, Advance of Zeta. They have some very unique designs. This is like the evolution of the Mark II. I love it. 155. Ouch. Okay. Here's another one, and I actually don't think the price is that bad. This would be one that would be easier for me to go, okay, I can get this one thing. Um, but it's awesome. It's the uh, uh, Saikamu System Zaku Ver Anime. Um, so I want to say that this was in... Um, Thunderbolt, or a version of this was in Thunderbolt, but this thing is just so sick. It even does the the arms come out like I, I can just picture having it on like these stands with the arms coming out, shooting all the laser beams. And look at those effect parts. Look at all of those jet effect parts. Whoa, and it comes with the stand. Okay. So, you know, that that is pretty cool. Um, wow. Yeah, the 3 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, so, man, for me to wake up at 2, I, I still don't know. By the time I get to bed, I'm either going to set my alarm on my phone or not. Um, on one hand... If I miss it and it actually does sell out, well, there's money I didn't spend. But if it's still available, I'll be happy. And I would think that I, they wouldn't sell out, right? Do these things sell out? I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's let's move on. You know, I was just talking about the ball. So, yeah, Gundam of the week, or should I say Mobile Suit of the week. Let me start that over for cutting this. Mobile Suit of the week is the RB79 ball. Well, why? Well, because I got it. Uh, the Robot Spirits version, because I've never really paid too much attention to it other than seeing it in Mobile Suit Gundam, but also watching MS Igloo had a really cool episode centered around that. And I think they even have the picture of it here where it kind of has, it looks like a lot of the combat, but the post Mobile Suit Gundam, they have like an extra like arm thing to give them a bigger claw. Um, it kind of has a little like decoration there. But yeah, let's jump into this. The RB-79 ball is a fictional weapon from the anime series Mobile Suit Gundam. Hmm. All right, so OVA. What's... I have not seen Mobile Suit Gundam Battlefield Record Avant title. Um, Sounds cool. What is this? It was released along with the Gundam 30th anniversary box. Hmm. Oh, is it a game? Well... There you go. I wish I could easily play all these games, but got these emulators and stuff. Um, so, okay, let's look at this then. Um, developed from Space Pod. So this is where we're seeing Pod used. Ah, that's pretty cool. Kind of has like a little TIE Fighter look to it. Um, and it looks like that was the kind of the first iteration. Oh, I like that. I like the way that looks. Okay, so it looks like they had the pod as like the first iteration. Um, and real quick, because I don't know how short the ball would be. This is the SPW-03 Space Pod. is a civilian-use mobile pod from the design series Mobile Suit Variations. Okay. Uh, the simple ball-shaped space worker pod was built for construction or constructing space colonies. The area around the cockpit is covered with glass to ensure visibility during work. 
In the short story Soldier's Day 2 from the manga Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Rebellion, Ken Betterstadt, a member of the Xeon Republic Republican Army, works for the Colony Corporation while on leave. On October 22nd, 0083, he and his colleagues boarded the machine to work on the Colony Revitalization Project. Okay. So just a little bit of information there. It's from the 0083 manga, which would be cool to kind of get more information from. So... Anyway, back to this. All right, it has some variants. We don't need to go through all of them. They've got the variants. They've got the developed into B Gundam. Is that a joke? I want to see what this is. Looks like a joke, but that also looks awesome. So this is from Mobile Suit uh, Crossbone Gundam Skull Heart. First scene in 79, last scene in 79. Okay, so... I already have so many questions, but we don't have time for that. I'll have to look into this later. I mean, really, that's the RX-78-2 head, or a Gundam head. Doesn't have the uh, V-fin. Lost opportunity there. But that is interesting. All right, let's look at some more interesting information here. Um, let's see. Do I really want to look? Let, just real quick, we'll look at these to RB133 makes me think 0133, like far in the future. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Crossbone Gundam. So that could be a future version. So it's got like three guns or three cannons. Okay. I see. Uh, yeah, Crossbone Gundam manga. Okay. And then we have this RB79PP polypod ball. So that is awesome. But it's not cannon is it this is a gumpla created okay so i mean look that is cool i would love to see something like that in uc but it's not officially part of uc so yeah anyway let's uh look at the technology and combat characteristics the federation refitted about 1200 of the civilian model worker space pods known as sp uh, uh w03 space pods we we're just looking at the Federation reinforced it with heavier armor and mounted a 180mm low-recoil cannon on top. The ball mobile pod also had vernier thrusters mounted all along the body. Yeah, that's where I broke my uh, effect parts. Yeah, great. A standard EFSF combat... Actually, you know what? Let me show that since I've got that here. Like, if you want to look, like, it's got... Um, yeah, you can see I put the blue tack where the thrusters are. But you can see that there's four down there at the bottom. And there's also, well, what am I doing? Um, all look kind of around there uh, in the back. Also, I don't know if that's it on the sides. But you can see how it's got a lot of that maneuverability um, for space. Yeah. Um, let's see, a standard EFS, uh, EFSF combat team. Uh, would consist of three RGM-79 GMs and two balls to counter Xeon's three MS tactical units. Though other formations have been seen, ball only teams of one RB 79K and two RB 79 launched from a Salamis class cruiser and various large formations launched from Columbus class ships. Um, yeah, the directional thrusters mounted on the ball units were directed solid fuel explosives, the detonation giving an impulse through the thrusters to change the direction of the ball. This configuration gave the ball unit good reaction speed and reasonable maneuverability on each thrust, but very limited use of the system compared to the liquid fuel directional thrusters on mobile suits. Okay. The ball units had an advantage when it came to refueling on board the Columbus class support vessel due to the lack of beam weapons and low number of liquid fuel thrusters, making the refueling rearming time extremely short compared to any mobile suit that runs on thermonuclear power. In fact, the thrusters and weapons were designed to be modular, allowing uh, depleted thruster banks and empty gun magazines to literally be removed by the servicing crew to be reloaded at a later time and fully loaded ones to be quickly installed in their place. Because it does not have a thermonuclear reactor and is driven by a fuel cell, it can be operated even on ships that do not have MS cooling facilities. So, interesting stuff. At first, the ball was seen as ill-suited for combat. It had limited ammo, relatively thin armor, though sloped to assist in projectile deflection, and lacked the AMBAC system or any sort of close in-weapon other... Or, I'm sorry... Wait, let me, and back, let me look that up real quick. Active 
mass balance control. Oh, okay, that allows for thrusterless maneuvering in the zero-g. Very cool. Okay, so uh, it didn't need that, I guess, um, or any sort of close-in weapon other than its manipulator claws. The most famous battle involving balls was Operation Star One. Ah, I wonder if this is... Okay, an operation undertaken to further pressure Zeon into retreating from Earth after the Federation took the upper hand following Odessa. So that's what's in MS Igloo, this Operation Star One. Since the GM was not yet ready, over a thousand balls were committed along with Salamis-class and Magellan-class warships. Their numbers overwhelmed the Zeon fleets and drove them away, but countless RB-79s were destroyed during what turned out to be one of the most brutal battles for the Federation. Soon after, the ball earned the nickname Mobile Coffin among EFSF pilots. It is sometimes joked that in Gundam 0079, the only time a ball ever hit anything was when one is kicked into a GM by a Zaku 2. Yeah, and that is kind of a scary, that's the thing with space and mobile suits and like being out in space, the vacuum of space in some sort of metal container that could be your coffin. Um, and they really hit that well with MS Igloo. All right. However, some statistics on the unit counters this view of the ball unit being weak. In fact, it had a specification superior to many of their opponents. The ball was smaller than the average mobile suits, which not only made it more difficult, a more difficult target to hit than a GM, but also made it lighter as well as gave it, uh, gave it a higher acceleration rate than most contemporary mobile suits. Hmm. All of the supposedly very powerful mobile armors, save for the new, few new type units, had lower mass thrust ratios, acceleration, uh, than the ball unit. All the earlier model space combat mobile suits, specifically the Zakus and Rig Dom, had inferior acceleration and less sensor range. This gave the ball unit a very good advantage in hit-and-run tactics, even when not supporting GMs. The ball's real advantage came from both numbers and cost. The ball cost about one-fourth of an RGM-79, next to nothing to the EFSF, and was heavily mass-produced, becoming a support unit for warships and RGM-79 GMs during the One-Year War. So yeah, if you were to watch Mobile Suit Gundam, MS Igloo, some of that early stuff, yeah, you can really see these things in action. It's pretty cool. Armaments, 180 millimeter low recoil cannon. Yeah, it's just that one cannon that sits at the top. Um, you know, and I don't even know if this laser effect part is correct for it, but um, yeah, pretty cool. Just one little, little dilly there. All right, uh, history. The concept for a combat mobile pod was initially devised as early as UC-0076 under the RX-76 project. However, development was put on hold until February 13th, UC-0079, where the project was revived with renewed interest. The first RB-79 ball was rolled out in June of UC-0079 during the outbreak of the one-year war between the Earth Federation and the Principality of Xeon. The Federation lacked any sort of the mass-produced humanoid mecha known as mobile suits, the Xeonic forces laid waste to the Federation with their mobile suits, the MS-05B Zaku-1 and later MS-06F Zaku-2. To counteract this, the Federation scrambled to make some sort of mobile weapon that could counter the Xeon attack. However, their new prototype mobile suit, the RX-78-2 Gundam, was too close costly to mass produce, and their first mass production mobile suit, the RGM-79GM, just wasn't being fielded fast enough. Thus, the RB-79 Ball mobile pod was born. Easier to build and mass produce, the RB-79 was soon on the front lines fighting the MS-06 Zaku-2s and the other Xeon mobile suits. Although lighter armed than its larger brothers, it was able to provide fire support and hold the line against the Zaku until the GM's gun tank, gun cannon, and Gundam came into the war. So very interesting that really, there was really no use of this ball that already was kind of on its way to production, the war broke out. The Gundam was kicking some butt, and they couldn't get the GMs out fast enough. So, it, I guess because of the uh, Gundam, um, it allowed the ball was able to augment, you know, on the battlefield. So that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So yeah, that's your mobile suit of the week. All right, moving on. Let's look at. Some of these cool comments. So from Abraham Lincoln, this was on my last podcast. 
totally agree with you uh, with what you said about the new type stuff towards the end. I enjoy the grounded military stuff in Gundam a lot, but it's really only half of the formula, and new types are the other half, which is the same reason why I love Star Wars as well. Gundam is special because it uses hard military sci-fi and fantastical new type elements to tell extremely real-feeling human tales. Yeah, totally agree with all that, and it reminds me, so Star Wars Visions is out right now, and that is anime-inspired. It's actually literally anime. Um, that's actually inspired by Star Wars, which Star Wars is inspired by Japanese culture anyway, so it's kind of like full circle. Um, you know, it, what's interesting is I noticed that these these uh, vision shorts really just focused on the Force. And lightsabers to an extent, which I don't know if that was mandated or that's just what these Japanese uh, anime studios were more interested in. Um, I, you know, and I like that stuff too, but they could have mixed in some stuff that was more just like what you'd see in Rogue One or Solo, where it's really just about, uh, being stuck in the war and all that. Almost like, you know, when you watch, uh, uh, War in the Pocket, 0080, where these characters are stuck in the war, but it really has nothing to do with anyone being new types, even though the Alex is the NT1, which is, could, probably not a new type, but maybe, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, good good point on that. Star Wars and Gundam, very similar. The fantastical elements might sometimes take some time to really soak in. Um, all right. Oh, and then obviously from Robert, um, what do Gundam fans do when they find out there's a new UC Timeline MS Gunpla? So I wonder, they Zagok. I don't get it. You're going to have to help me with that one. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Star Blazers. Yeah, Robert has some good commentary. So if you guys are checking out the podcast um, after the fact, check out his uh, his comments. Um, it is their phonetic pronunciation. That was probably about the Titans, maybe. Um, or the Tetons. Which just goes to show that you can really pronounce it any one of two ways. The English way or the Japanese way. All right. So, yeah, that game from Rob the uh, the Builder. I was talking about a game I was playing. And he was saying Journey to Jaburo, which I haven't played. And that looks great. But actually, what I played was called Encounters in Space. And that, that game is really awesome. Um, but it could be that this Journey to Jaburo was more awesome. But... It, what was interesting is I played Encounters in Space. It's a PS2 game. I used an emulator. I played it um, maybe this time last year, and it was you know my first time playing it. And it and it um, what am I trying to say? It it stood well in the modern era of gaming. Like I was, I had fun playing it. Went through the whole thing. It was great. Um, all right. Yep. Guess it's UC stands here. That was from Clint. Uh, and Clint is a long time contributor here. By long time, I mean it's been 10 podcasts. Um, anyway, what would anyone here think of an actual Gundam team up show? All right. Honestly, a bit of everything. What the Extreme Verse series of games hints at. Good point. Um, I know that would mean it's more of an action show and loses a lot of the nuance Gundam is iconic for. Okay, that's a good point, too. But I'm near certain. Uh, any show where time and space are mixed up enough for Amro to team up with Benajer or better yet, Seeds, Athron, I don't know who that, with Double Zero, Setsuna, Hero from Wing, and Mikazuki from IBO, it would be crazy, but in the best way. So that is a good point because, you know, I don't watch it, but there's the Builder or the Build Divers. I'm uh, sorry. I'm, there's that other Gundam show that's people building Gunpla, and they're all different types. They'll come out with. Older MS is just kind of modernized, but what Clint's saying here is a pretty good point is it's about the characters. So that that would be interesting. That would almost be like a what if or Star Wars Visions type of scenario. Um, yeah, I like that. All right, Santo Bell. Um, this is from the cost signature Zeta Gundam uh, video. Well, I don't yet have a Zeta in my collection. It's not for wanting one. I'm... Just not sure which to get. I do have the transforming uh, MG 
uh, or Master Grade uh, ESX Gundam, which is from the same era of the UC timeline as Trans. Form modes make me want to own three sets so I can display one as as the MS, one as uh, the three fighters in the Gundam S configuration, and one as the cruiser. And I think that same way too. That's why I have with my Zeta. I now have the Metal Robot Spirits. It's in its mobile suit form, and I have the fixed figuration in Wave Rider form. And that's a good point. Like that new Eclipse Gundam uh, Master Grade that can transform. Like I would want two because yeah. So, uh, but I would say at the end of the day, uh, I almost think. They should come out with some sort of Zeta. And I, I always stick with Robot Spirits. I don't know why. But some action figure form of the, the mobile suit. And it comes with the Wave Rider. And just make them separate. They need to do that with the Double Zeta. They don't have a lot of the Double Zeta um, core top and stuff. All right. Um, Perfect Strike. Or Perfected Strike Gundam Lupus Rex. Is that a real one? I haven't heard of that. That sounds really cool. Um, Robert, oh, asking about sketching for the designs. That's right. I mean, if you guys want to check out the fan fiction and there's a fan art channel, um, it would be cool for artists out there that are really good. I mean, I like to sketch, but I'm not that good. But to, yeah, take some of the cues from the, the, the fan fiction and create Gundam from that. That would be really cool. I'd feature that here. Um, Clint Roy, uh, Mukurakate. Again, some people on Twitter have talked about Gundam vs. Kaiju stories. What would you guys think about that? Um, oh, okay. So, wait. You know Double uh, O has aliens in the movie, right? Nope. Yeah, because I, uh, I haven't watched it. Got to check that out. I had no idea. So, that's pretty cool. That, that's actually pretty cool. All right, Howard Thomas. Enjoying your Gundam content? I recently subscribed and look forward to many new videos. Well, great. I'm glad that good timing because I put up that um, yeah that uh, Attack and Torrington based video out of nowhere, and I'm I'm glad I did that. I want to do more stuff like that. Um, oh, and then there's some more uh, Japanese from Robert. He's got Japanese in his family, so he knows a thing or two. Um, and I guess he was yeah. What no original Gundam? Maybe because I didn't do the second episode. Let me let me guys know what you think if I should do that second episode uh, of. Mobile Suit Gundam. All right. In fact, and this is from Clint again. In fact, guys, while I do watch the UC, I haven't watched a lot of key parts of it. I've been more of an AU series guy. Want to change that now? Can I have some suggestions? I'm going to say original Mobile Suit Gundam or movies. But if you do the trilogy... Go back and watch the show. Yeah, I think um, the 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 trilogy has some fixes. I wouldn't call them fixes necessarily, but it helps kind of condense everything into three movies. Um, but the show really expands on a lot of stuff. So it's like you really need to see the show for that. Um, okay, and then from... Oh, Lack of L A C O B V S. Um, Zeta is by far the best season of the early UC. You hear that, Clint? Once you're finished with Mobile Suit Gundam, you need to watch Zeta because it is, yeah, it is awesome. Uh, Zeta is awesome. It's, it's like I always say, it's like when they got the uh, uh, the budget to oh, well, Mobile Suit Gundam was popular. Here's the budget. Do whatever you want for the next series, and yeah, it really shows. Ah, uh, here's my brother from another mother, Mitchell. Uh, first I don't even think he's really into Gundam he's just supporting me all right Jeremy Lewis thank you for all the lore didn't know that all of the designs are from previous series such a nice touch of world building yeah that's what made that like episode really cool because when I'm first watching it I'm like okay I'm I know more of these mobile suits now where are all they from and all where are they all from and so I decided I used that wiki the Gundam wiki for that and Kind of had to do some research and stuff, but yeah. All right. This is from Trevor Brancho. Brancho. Sorry. Um, the Zaku in the back is an FZ type with the Fritz helmet. It had a darker color scheme than what's shown in the wiki. 
The same Zaku FZ was in a mission with the Ifrit in the Gundam Missing Link game. Okay, see, I love it. I love being corrected because then I can potentially update the um, <laughs> the uh, description of that video with this information because um, that's good. And in that video too, I I even listed out all of them that I found in links to their wikis um, to look at it. Okay, uh, from Santo Bell, Barlint and Jesta and the good old Z uh, Zaku 2, great battle sequence. Yeah, that was a great, I, I love that Barlint custom. I would love a metal robot spirits of that. Uh, yeah, the custom specifically, because it's kind of got that Titans flair. Uh, even though I guess the other one was was technically Titans too. Um, what's the best transformable MS uh, in the UC? So... I'm going to say Double Zeta Gundam. Multiple parts. And looks cool. And maybe it's because it's so elusive to me because I've never really had any either Gumpla or action figure of the Zeta or the Double Zeta Core Fighter, Core Booster, Core Top, Core Bottom, whatever they're called. Um. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. All right. Um, Matt Ralph literally just watched this episode myself. Cool to see all the different places the suits came from. Yeah, that's one cool thing about it. It could have just been they had this battle and then all of a sudden these suit, suits showed up. But it kind of showed where the remnants were in Earth in that area. So, yeah, very cool. Oh, and uh, Joanne Carl uh, Artaco? No, not Artaco. Artacho. Artacho. I don't know, but that is a cool name, so apologies on that. But uh, the first time I saw this episode, I was too focused on the Xeon remnants because of all the unique mobile suits they brought into the fight. I can't believe it took me until this video to realize how also disorganized the EFF was uh, with their one-off MS and only a couple of mass-produced ones. Nice. Yeah, you know, that is pretty interesting because they had the, the Nemos and the GMs. They had some Aqua GMs hanging out there. And then I guess it took time for the Briarlint to come out and just lay waste. So that's what it took. And I think that is it, yeah, for the comments. So yeah, thanks everyone uh, for, for uh, yeah commenting. Um, yeah, head to the Discord. I really maybe I should just set up the channel and then ask for people in the Discord. Hey guys, gals, uh, put your comments here so I can read them on the podcast. I probably should. Do a call to action, right? Well, well, I guess that's it for this week. Um, hope that was enjoyable. I'm glad I did 10 of these. That's awesome. And I'll keep doing them. Um, I will update everyone on, you know, what I decide to do about these sweet, sweet robot spirits on Premium Bandai. Am I going to wake up that early? And regardless if I do or not, and they're still up for pre-order. Will I even spend that money? Stay tuned. And I'll talk to you guys later.